I called an audible. It's only a five minute wait. I mean, you kind of got it, don't you? I think so. entrance to Star Wars. Uh, I don't know if I showed this the other day because uh, I started getting a little busy, not gonna lie. It's not be too terribly busy. It's 45 minutes for rise on the regular standby. I might check to see if they have a uh, lightning lane available. What I think is interesting about Star Wars Galaxy's Edge here is that there's no like signs pointing you to go anywhere. So I guess it doesn't ruin the theming. But if you don't uh, know where you're going, you're kind of destination uh, effed. So this is Savi's right here. And if I remember right, Doc, Ondor, Doc Ondar's is right next door, which is my whole reason for coming over. So yeah, Sabi's is right down there. There's the stairs. Here's the uh, Rana Roasters joint. And here's Sabi's right here. That's Doc Andor. Very cool. I'm assuming that Doc is behind that red curtain right there. And the last two times we've been in here, he's been covered up. So either they shut him down later in the day or he's broke. So I think I might look at the lightsabers. Hmm. So uh, walking around Galaxy's Edge. Just because, you know, the other day when I was here with all the guys and stuff like that, it was great and we had a blast and everything like that, but, you know, I didn't take the time to, like, really look hard at details and things like that. We were focused on goofing off and joking around and having fun and stuff like that, but I did give myself a thermal detonator Coke, and this will be the first drink, sugary drink, that I've had in, like, three months. <laughs> so... And the only reason I'm drinking is because I really want the bottle. <laughs> and I hate Diet Coke. They have a Diet Coke too, but I, I hate Diet Coke. Um, also, I may have uh, did a little extra, extra shopping here, which I'll share later. 
So I got this thing called a Wookie cookie. And it's two oatmeal sandwich broke cookies with uh, it's like an oatmeal cream pie with Chewbacca's bandolier on it. <laughs> so where I'm at is right next to where Star Tours is. It's called Backlight Express. And it's right next to the Indiana Jones Stunt Spectacular. And I hear like gunfire pops. Like they're testing the special effects and stuff over there. You can see people moving around a little bit. I don't know if you can hear that or not. Pretty cool. So yeah, that cookie was good. I'm a sucker for like oatmeal cookies. I love oatmeal cookies, but you can never find them unless they got like fucking raisins in them. And I hate, I don't want a fucking cookie with the raisins in them. So those didn't have raisins. Uh, I mean, it's exactly what you think it is. Two big oatmeal cookies with that vanilla, you know, uh, cream in between them. With the chocolate bandolier. The, the bandolier adds nothing to it. I mean, but it's a pretty good gimmick for uh, <laughs> some of those Star Wars suckers. <laughs> so, it was good. Alright, so after I ate my Wookiee cookie at uh, Hollywood Studios, uh, I left there and went to, um, parked at the Lime Garage at Disney Springs and went to um, Art Smith's Homecoming for dinner. And then I went to go pick up these cookies at Gideon's Bakehouse. First of all, I love the art, the, like the artwork on this. And like inside on the wall, it's really, that's the first time I've ever been in there. It's really cool. But I'm not going to open these up because I'm saving them for later. Because oh, I'm not hungry after Art Smith's. But I got the the monthly uh, limited edition cookie, the white chocolate caramel macadamia nut, which is right up my alley. And then I got the... Uh, the um, handmade cookie there, the peanut butter crunch. So these things are gigantic. They're like yeet, like a third of a cookie at a sitting. They're, I mean, they're just huge. Like the the weight of it, I bet you that's at least a half a pound. You know what? I'll sh I'll show you inside. Here. They, got, they got them all covered up. But, I mean, that's the size of this. I mean, look at this thing. It's gigantic. such like a lily vibe to it. It's inside the Gideon's Bakehouse.
that's all I that's all I did tonight. Um, I, and I honestly I wasn't gonna do that, but I got a phone call from housekeeping when I was working, and I guess it was like two o'clock, and I had my um, door hanger on that says "Do not disturb." That there's somebody in here or whatever, and um, they called up and they said, "Hey, we know that." Since you've been here, we haven't been able to get in and clean the room or anything like that. And I'm like, oh, that's all right. I'm a, I'm a clean person anyway. I mean, like, I'm like a type A clean freak, nut job, OCD person. So, um, as you can tell by the way I keep my hats and my shoes. And <laughs> but uh, I said, oh, it's no big deal. And they're like, well, since you've been here for three days and we haven't been able to get in there, we kind of need to do a. I think, I, I'm trying to remember what she said. She either said, like, wellness check or something. Like, basically saying that they wanted to make sure that I wouldn't fuck it up the room. <laughs> or there was a dead body in here or something. So, <laughs> but, uh, so I said, oh, okay. I said, well, you know, I said, I guess you can come when I go to dinner. And they're like, well, we do housekeeping up until 11 p.m. So if you want us to clean the room when you're gone, we will. So they came in and they made the bed I was sleeping in because everything else is fine. But um, I just thought it was funny. And I'm going to remember that for next time. So when you, I guess they do that at all the hotels when you stay on Disney property, which which is fine. I get it. No, no big deal. Um, I did, as I showed um, when I was at Hollywood Studios, I did a little shopping. And I'm actually going to do a little video of that here next. So... Um, that's it for now. Today was work, real quick shopping trip. I rode um, Star Wars, um, I can't remember, Star Wars, which was fun, uh, and, and I like it. And I got the new, I think everybody's getting kind of the new scenes that they put in right now. So I got the Ahsoka Tano one, um, which is cool to see, so. Uh, fun ride. Uh, apparently, it's a, it's a low weight all the time, so it's not anything that you need like the Genie Plus for. I didn't look to see if there was a Lightning Lane available for Rise, just because I was ready to leave um, and get. I wanted to get out of there before like everybody started making a mad rush again. So, and then I drove over to. Uh, I just drove there and parked there, and then I drove to um, Disney Springs. So, that's it for this one. Okay, so I know that, that I built my Sabi Saber here, and it's very cool, and I love how custom it is, and it's incredibly heavy. Like this right here, I mean, is like, I'll compare it to like a mag flashlight. So, like that kind of metal and that kind of heft. So these are super, super cool. The experience for this, again, is super, I mean, it's expensive and probably not worth it, but <laughs> I'm, I mean, it's too kick-ass not to do. I give it a spin and it doesn't move out of place and it sounds like it's in You're going to actually feel it click in. That's how I can pull it up like this. Nice and I'm going to pull up that in the middle. There we go. There you are. Perfect. All right. Now you'll see on the side of your chassis, you have a red and a blue square. We're gonna pick one set of our activation plates. You guys just have the same ones there. On the inside, there's a matching blue or red square. Blue touches the blue, and the red touches the red. Two sets of activation plates. She's a beauty. She's Never a do this. You part. You're a Star Wars. I'm a Star Wars. You have all successfully assembled your very own lightsaber hilt, and nothing unexpected or traumatic has happened. She wiped palms up. That's actually pretty good for us here. Um, <laughs> Let's go ahead and proceed. This does bring us to the most critical stage of the build, and that is stabilizing your crystals for activation. 
Builders, please leave your completed health at your station and step back as far as you safely can. Let all gatherers who are... <laughs> <laughs> Saber is about to be forged. In a moment, I will ask you all to step forward, place your hand on your hilt, and collectively on my signal, we will activate our lightsabers together. Are you ready? Yeah. 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 All right. <laughs> Are you ready? Yeah. Step forward, place your hand on your hilt, and activate. Yeah. <laughs> Builders, ready? your lightsabers. You have just built a lightsaber, right? Like the Jedi and the Sith who have come before you. Just like them, you too can change the galaxy. Remember, it only takes a spark. Now builders, please deactivate and lower your lightsaber. Ah! Complete your lightsaber, Aiders. Like you when it can, but leave you it cannot. Your journey, you both will begin. May the Force be with you. Thank you, Master Yoda. Friends, in your hands, you hold remarkable power. And remarkable power should not be dropped on the ground. Lightsaber, we are pleased to present you with these special sheets as you depart. Well, unfortunately our time is now at an end, but your journey is just beginning. It's now time to make your mark on the galaxy. Please remember, you're just as unique and extraordinary as the lightsaber you have built. I don't know, maybe someday we'll be telling your story. Raise your sabers and activate! Build oh. the spire! Fail the spire! Go forth, my friends, the galaxy waits. They also have these other lightsabers. Uh, they have a bunch of plastic ones that like kids can build and, and stuff that are like, you know, $30 or whatever it might be um, that the kids can play with and whack around and everything like that. But they also have what they call legacy hilts and they just sell the hilt. Like there's no blade or anything like that. And what they are is it's like, Obi-Wan Kenobi Saber, Luke Skywalker's, Darth Vader's, uh, Yoda's, uh, Darth Maul's, um, so just tons of characters and, and their, their sabers. There are only two lightsabers in the film ever that I was like, that is the coolest thing in the world. And I bought them both. So let me show you what I got here. So first off, here's the case that the first one came in. And this is Luke Skywalker's. And it's Luke Skywalker's, not the blue one from, first, from A New Hope, because that was actually Anakin Skywalker's, wasn't it? So this right here is the one that he has from Return of the Jedi, which I know the popular opinion is, is that The Empire Strikes Back, the second movie, was the best movie. Return of the Jedi, for me, was my all that's my all-time favorite movie and the lightsaber that he builds in there is the coolest lightsaber i'm going to say second coolest one now this right here is the the sleeve in the emitter that it comes with because it has a real thin neck if you remember correctly in the movie 
like the the neck is super thin well you can't put the blade in there um, for it to work right and with that thin of a neck so this is what you display right here okay but they give you a another one right here that you attach to the hilt so that you can put the blade on it. The Savi's one comes with a 32 inch blade. I bought a 30, I thought I told her 32, another 32, but this is a 36 inch blade. And these right here don't change colors. So this one right here is always gonna be green. Like you can't change the um, crystal inside. But these are basically just display items only anyway. So I had to have this one. So I got it. And then the other one I got. Hold on a second. All right. So here's the other one. This is Darth Vader's. All right. And I'll show you why I love this one so much. Obviously, it's iconic. But... It comes in this really cool case. Here, here's the um, Luke one, by the way, with the regular, like the display one, which looks so good. So, and that just sits in there. And then the other emitter that you put on there when you have the blade has storage underneath here. So that's where that goes. And then the Vader one, obviously. What I love about this one, besides it being iconic, is I love the exposed wires on both sides and the hilt or the uh, emitter thing I always thought was so cool looking along with the rubber grip. So here's that one there. Let me put the blade in it. Okay, so I'm super glad that I checked these because this one is kind of screwed um i put the blade in wouldn't turn on or anything like that so i obviously first thing checks the battery so i pulled out the little battery pack on it and one of the batteries just had a bunch of it was like damp and had corrosion all over it and one of the batteries looked warp i pulled that out and i put a spare battery i had sitting around in there still doesn't work so this is going to need to go back and uh, I will be checking <laughs> that one before I leave. So, but um, anyway, that's what I got. Those are the things I bought. And I will uh, set up a display at home that I kind of already have planned out and uh, put that on here later. That's it.